Okay, previously we had looked at sources and resistors, voltage sources, current sources, resistors. Today we're going to look at our very first circuit. We're going to connect a few of these components together and analyze it. But before we do that, I need to talk a little bit first about how we connect things together, the kinds of models and the types of elements we use to put things together. So I want to talk about wires and switches and how they're going to apply in circuits one. So let's consider some of the things we're going to use. And one of those is the following. It is a wire for a connection or a short circuit, depending upon what you want to call it. And the idea behind this is you've got two points A and B and I'm going to draw a wire that connects this point to this point, essentially making that connection between the two. In this class, we're going to assume that a wire is an ideal thing, an ideal connective element, which has a resistance of zero ohms. It is a perfect connector between the two. Now, here's something I always like to point out to students. Let's say I've got two points like so, one and two. And over here I've got three and four. So here I draw a wire between one and two. Here I draw a wire between three and four. Except I draw it in this nice long looping path. Now, here's the question. What's the difference between those two wires? No difference whatsoever. It doesn't matter how long, how bizarrely drawn, how stretched out it is, a wire is a perfect connector. And so it doesn't matter. I can make this as long as I want, bend it around as much as I want to. There's no difference between the connection between three and four than between one and two. So these things are ideal. They're just ways of representing that you have got a connection, a perfect connection between those two points. So here's our wire. Now, along with that, we can also take a connection between two points and we can erase the wire. We can break the connection. And we will call this an open connection or a open circuit. So if we have two points, C and D, and there's a wire between them and we make a break in that wire, we assume that break has infinite resistance. It is a perfect open connection. So between these two extremes, the short circuit and the open circuit, or the wire and the open connection, we have this. We have a model that combines both together. Let's say I've got two points E and F, and I've got something here that represents a connection. I can either close and connect these two points together or open and separate those two points. In this case, R is equal to zero. When I close this, when I open it, R is equal to infinity. Or a way to look at it is, I'm switching this connection. I'm flipping it, I'm turning it on. I open it, I turn it off. Just like you would turn a light on and off at a wall. That's what you're doing. When you're flipping a switch, you are closing a connection so that current can flow or you're opening the connection so current can't flow anymore. All right? So you're going to see this concept of a switch quite a bit later on when we get to first order RL and RC circuits. But obviously this is something that you are very familiar with because you've been using these kinds of things all your life. Now, of course, in the real world, wire isn't ideal. Wire is usually made of a good conductor like aluminum or copper or something like that. But once again, we're going to treat this as an ideal connection with this wire. 
anytime I draw this. All right. Now, something else you'll see. What if I've got two wires like so? And I've got a wire that has to cross another wire. If I don't want them to connect, you'll see it do this. I'll take one wire and I'll make a little loop that shows it's passing over the wire but not touching the other wire. On the other hand, I might have something like so, where I've got a wire that crosses another wire but I want them to touch, in which case you'll typically see a little dot to indicate that yes, these wires are connected together. So once again, you will see lots of this. You become very familiar with it as we keep working problems in this course. Okay, so this kind of gives us the background for how we're going to connect all of our components together, our ideal circuit elements. So now let's look at our very first circuit model. What we're going to do is we are going to model a battery. And what do I mean by modeling? When I model something in circuit analysis, or in engineering for that matter, what I'm doing is I'm taking something in the real world and I'm trying to create a mathematical model, a representation that can be mathematically analyzed. Engineers do this all the time. So we're going to do that with a battery and we're going to show how we can represent the behavior of that battery using the simple models we've seen so far. So we're going to start with a battery. So let's say this is an alkaline cell and if you're familiar with alkaline batteries, the kind that you put in flashlights or the kinds that go on remote controls, they tend to be cylindrical with a little tab on one end and you'll see a positive and a negative and then of course you fit these into whatever thing you want to power. And these are typically rated at 1.5 volts. It's typical for an alkaline cell. So what I want to do is I want to represent how a battery works. What I want to do is I'm going to connect a couple of wires to the positive and negative side of that battery. So these are ideal wires. And I want to ask, how do you model a battery? Okay. Well, it turns out there's a very simple first order model that people use for batteries all the time. They re represent them like so. A pretty good model for a battery, at least to the first order, is this. Let's take what's in this cell and let's instead replace it with an ideal voltage source connected in series with a resistor. I'll call this voltage Vs. I'm going to call this resistance Rs. This represents to a first order what's going on in that battery, what the behavior of that battery is going to be. Now, in this case, it's a 1.5 volt battery. So Vs will be equal to 1.5 volts. Rs depends upon the chemistry of the battery. And in this case, I'm going to assume Rs is 0.1 ohms. That's the internal resistance of the battery. So as I said, this is a, actually not a bad first order model for a battery. Now, one of the reasons why this is a nice model for a battery is, is you can actually simulate or you can predict how a battery is going to discharge and run out of energy by, over time, as you run the battery and the chemical reaction is used up inside the battery, the internal resistance increases. And that's actually a pretty good way to model how a battery, in effect, decays in performance. So we're going to take this. And we're going to do something. We're going to short this battery together. 
I'm going to take and put a perfect wire, connect this terminal to that terminal of the battery. Now, if you've ever been unfortunate enough or foolish enough or whatever to, uh, or, or accidentally, connected together the terminals of a battery, you will probably realize that's not a good thing. That can lead to the battery catching on fire or even exploding. It gets very, very hot, enormous amount of internal pressure, and it can literally go off like a bomb. And in fact, you will see people, fires getting started by lithium ion batteries shorting out, for example, in cell phones. So let's model that behavior. What is going on? Why does a battery get hot and explode when you short the terminals together? Okay, well, I'm going to use this model here where I've connected it together, and we're going to see what happens. Let me redraw that over here. Let's take my shorted out battery, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this resistor and I'm just going to kind of pull it along, pull it along, pull it along. I'm going to pretend these wires can stretch, and then I'm going to put this over here. So I'm going to redraw this. So all I've done here is I've taken, this is exactly the same circuit here as here. I've simply gone and I've pulled this resistor along to the other side, but the connectivity between the components is still exactly the same. So in this case, this is 1.5 volts. This is 0 0.1 ohms. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use Ohm's law to calculate what is going on with this battery. Okay, so looking at this, I've got an ideal voltage source. Now, according to that ideal voltage source, I have 1.5 volts positive to negative between these two terminals. But notice this terminal and this terminal are the same. I've connected the resistor and the voltage source together. And this terminal and this terminal for the resistor are the same. So if I have 1.5 volts here, what I will see is, clearly, I've got 1.5 volts along the entire length of this wire on the top and the bottom. If I measure 1.5 volts here, I measure it here, I measure it here, I measure it here, I measure it here. So if I've got 1.5 volts here, I've also got it across that resistor. Now hopefully that's kind of an intuitive thing. In fact, they're connected together to the same two points. They must have the same voltage. So in this case, I'm going to apply Ohm's law. I'm going to define a current I sub S entering the positive end of the voltage across that resistor. Okay, once again using the pass assign convention. The convention. And so in this case, what I will have is I sub S is equal to 1.5 volts divided by 0 0.1 ohms, which will be equal to 15 amps. So this must be 15 amps, according to Ohm's law, that's flowing into that resistor. But if I've got 15 amps flowing into the top of the resistor, obviously it's also flowing out of the bottom of the resistor. <laughs> And also, I've got the same 15 amps flowing into the source and also flowing out of the source. So the same 15 amps must be flowing through both components. Keep in mind, what goes in must come out. What goes in must come out. So here we begin to see we have to start to develop some of the, tuition, the intuition for how these circuits work and how currents behave and how voltages behave. Now let's do another little calculation here. Let us calculate the powers of the two elements in this very simple circuit. So looking at this, this is our voltage source Vs. This is our resistor Rs. What is the power of the resistor? PRS must be equal to, well, from last time, I squared times R, so IS squared times RS. Plug in the values, this is equal to 15 squared times 
0.1 will be equal to 22.5 watts. That's the power of the resistor. And note, it's got to be a positive value. What is the power of the voltage source? What's PVS? Now, if I'm going to ask you to calculate the power, I need to apply the pass assign convention. If I'm going to, for any element, calculate the power, I need to know, I need to use the pass assign convention to do P is equal to V times I. But looking at this, clearly, this circuit doesn't obey the pass assign convention. Why is that? Because the current's flowing out of the positive terminal for that voltage source. How do I fix that? Well, if I want to follow the PSC, let's flip the direction of that current and make it minus 15 amps. Now that voltage source obeys the pass assign convention. And now I can go through and I can say PVS must be equal to 1.5 times minus 15, which is equal to minus 22.5 watts. Negative power, in other words, the voltage source is generating power. And what do we have here? Positive value, negative value. I add them together. The sum of the powers must be equal to zero. Once again, power balance. The sum of the powers for any circuit, add, all the together, all the, add them all together for all the elements, you should always get zero. That's your way of checking to make sure your answer is correct. So, here we have an explanation for why battery explodes. Keep in mind, that resistor is internal to the battery. What's happening is it's dissipating heat. It heats up. If you short the terminals of the battery together, that internal resistance gets very, very hot. If it gets too hot, it will literally cause the battery to explode or catch on fire. So that's why shorted batteries are dangerous, because they have a non-zero internal resistance that will heat up will dissipate heat if you short the terminals of the battery together. Okay, so this was our very, very first circuit model, the very first two components, a very simple circuit. So next time we will look at a more complex circuit, one that's got more elements, and we'll start looking at two of the other circuit laws we're going to need to start solving these kinds of problems, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law.